Let's have a look at how we can find algebraic expressions for trigonometric composite functions that include an inverse trigonometric function. And this can be done by using trigonometric identities or by drawing a diagram of an appropriate triangle. So for example, suppose we want to find a simple algebraic expression for cos of inverse sine of x. Using trigonometric identities firstly, we could do this by looking at the inside function here, which is inverse sine of x, and letting that be equal to theta, say. Now, if that is equal to theta, if we take sine of both sides, then sine theta is equal to sine of inverse sine of x. And for the purpose of this exercise, we can then rewrite that as sine theta is simply equal to x, since these are inverses of each other. And if we look at what we want, we wanted cos of sine inverse x, that is we want cos of theta, with the way we've defined theta here. So using a trigonometric identity there, what trigonometric identity relates sine theta and cos theta? And cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 directly relates those quantities, which is good because cos theta is what we want and sine theta is in terms of x. So that becomes cos squared theta plus and remember sine squared theta is sine theta all squared, so that becomes x squared. Cos squared theta plus x squared equals 1. And cos theta is what we're wanting to find, so that can be rearranged as cos squared theta equals 1 minus x squared, suggesting that cos theta could be equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, this is where it is worth thinking though about what we are looking at. And we were looking at cos of inverse sine x. And inverse sine x only takes a range of values between negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. And Similarly, what that means if we look at a diagram, cos theta is the x coordinate of a point on a unit circle. So if these are the only quadrants where inverse sine of theta is defined, then in these quadrants cos theta is going to be positive. So therefore, that means that we can eliminate the negative alternative here and say that cos theta, where that's cos of inverse sine of x, must simply be equal to the positive square root of 1 minus x squared. Now the alternative method we could have used here to work out our algebraic expression for cos of inverse sine of x would have been to draw a triangle. So we start in the same way as before by letting theta equal inverse sine of x, which as before is going to mean that x is equal to sine theta. And again, with theta defined as inverse sine of x, we are requiring cos theta. But here, instead of relating cos theta and sine theta with a formula, we relate them in a right angled triangle because sine theta it might help to think of that as x over 1. Sine theta is always the opposite side to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. So if we draw such a triangle, if we put theta down there for instance, the opposite side is there. So for instance if we let that have length x to get the correct ratio here for sine theta, the hypotenuse would have length 1. Now we want to find cos theta though, and cos theta in a triangle is always the adjacent side to the angle over the hypotenuse. 
and so the adjacent is this side here and by Pythagoras adjacent squared plus x squared equals 1 squared so rearranging that we find that the adjacent is of the form square root of 1 minus x squared so therefore cos theta which is what we want is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by the hypotenuse of 1 giving us the square root of 1 minus x squared and as before this is giving us an algebraic expression for cos of inverse sine of x. Now for the next two examples we will just go directly to using a triangle but again of course we could use trigonometric identities. In the second example let's find an algebraic expression for sec of inverse sine 3x. So here once again I would let theta be the inside function so here theta is equal to inverse sine of 3x and taking sine of both sides once again sine and inverse sine effectively cancel so that we get sine theta equals 3x and what do we want? We want sec of theta and from our triangle if we're going to draw up a diagram again once again we could put our angle theta there let's say now we know the trigonometric ratios for sine theta cos theta and tan theta so let's think about what sec theta is in terms of those familiar functions and sec of theta is 1 on cos theta so therefore in a right angled triangle cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse so therefore sec of theta is going to be 1 divided by adjacent on hypotenuse which is going to work out to be the reciprocal of that that is sec theta will be the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side now we also know that sine of theta is equal to 3x and once again for convenience I'll write that as 3x on 1 and sine theta is always the opposite side to the angle divided by the hypotenuse so that to get this correct ratio of 3x on 1 we could let the side opposite the angle be length 3x and the hypotenuse be length 1. From there we can thus work out what we want sec theta being the hypotenuse which we know is 1 but we need again to work out the length of this adjacent side here so looking at the adjacent again that's just Pythagoras the adjacent side that length squared plus 3x squared will be equal to the length of the hypotenuse 1 squared so that will give us the adjacent side squared will become 1 minus 9x squared if we expand that and subtract from both sides therefore the length of the adjacent side is the square root of 1 minus 9x squared so let's put that on our diagram now to help out a bit so now we're ready to go because we saw we want this sec theta equal to hypotenuse over adjacent now we can just read that off our triangle and from our triangle that's simply going to be 1 for the hypotenuse divided by square root of 1 minus 9x squared for the adjacent and that then is our expression for sec of inverse sine 3x equal to 1 on the square root of 1 minus 9x squared and again you could verify that is reasonable because like cos theta sec theta if we're dealing with values of the inverse sine function where again inverse sine always takes values in the first and fourth quadrant here sec is always positive so that also agrees with this being a positive expression let's do one final example and this one looks just a little bit different 
find an algebraic expression for sine of 2 tan inverse of x or sine of 2 arctan x. Now here, once again the theta, if we're doing this with triangles, it'll be convenient to get that from the inside function, but it's actually good just to let the theta be this part, be the inverse tan of x part, so that we let theta equal inverse tan of x, and then using the same principles before, if we take tan of both sides, tan theta is tan of inverse tan of x, which just gives us x equals tan theta. And you'll notice that means we are then requiring to find sine of 2 theta. So how do we do this? Well we can start off using the same idea as before that x on 1 we can think of as tan theta and tan theta in a right angled triangle is always the side opposite the angle divided by the length of the side adjacent to the angle. So here we could get that ratio for instance by letting the opposite side be length x and the adjacent side be length 1. But what do we do to find sine of 2 theta? What effect does that double angle formula have? And when we have a double or other multiple angle here, then we should write this in terms of single angles for functions such as sine cos tan. So is there any identity for sine 2 theta that splits that up into single angled trig functions? And the answer is yes there is. In particular, sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 times sine theta times cos theta. So how does this help us? Well, we can easily get sine theta and cos theta off that triangle. Sine theta is just opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta is just adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what is the length of the hypotenuse? Well, that's just straightforward Pythagoras again. It's going to be the length of the hypotenuse will be the square root of 1 squared plus x squared. That is the square root of 1 plus x squared. And we then will simply find sine theta being the opposite over the hypotenuse will be x divided by the square root of 1 plus x squared. Cos theta being the adjacent over the hypotenuse will be 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus x squared and now we'll be able to sub those into our formula. So sine of 2 theta which is also what we've been looking for that's sine of 2 inverse tan x that is going to just be equal to 2 times sine theta so 2 times x divided by square root 1 plus x squared times cos theta which is 1 divided by square root of 1 plus x squared and simplifying this it just becomes 2x on the numerator and on the denominator square root of 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x squared will just become 1 plus x squared. So this will be our final expression.